Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today, I have what I believe is the best new PC gaming build for just $350. Just like my $500 build that I did just last week, which you should definitely check out, we're gonna skip all the footage of me on camera and just jump straight into the build. So, let's get into it. One thing to note about this build, I honestly think that this is as cheap as you can get for a new PC build before it becomes not worth it. These are pretty much the absolutely lowest end new parts that I think are worth their money. Builds can always get cheaper, there are definitely cheaper options out there, but if you're building a PC with anything less than these parts, I would highly recommend you just buy used. For example, you could build a $300 completely used build that destroys this one, but I know some of you, kind of like myself, only want to buy new parts. I don't think you can build a worthwhile brand new PC for $300 or less at the time of this video, so that's why I I went with this price range. The first part in our extreme budget PC gaming build is the Intel Pentium G4560 processor. The G4560 is absolutely no joke and it's running in Intel's latest KB Lake processor line. For under 60 bucks you're getting a 3.5 gigahertz dual core 4 thread processor that packs a serious punch. The cool thing is that you'll be able to upgrade this to a better i5 or i7 Kaby Lake processor in the future because of our motherboard choice. Speaking of which, the motherboard is the same board that I used in my $500 build, the ASRock B250M HDV Micro ATX board. You could have saved a few bucks here and use a B150M motherboard and then flash the BIOS to support Cabby Lake, but if you don't have a Skylake processor, you won't be able to actually do that. If you spend a few extra bucks here and get the B250M, you'll be ready to go right out of the box and the big and bad Cabby Lake processors will all work with it. It sports one PCI Express port for our graphics card and two DDR4 slots up to 2400 MHz. This brings us to our RAM selection, which is a crucial 8GB kit of DDR4-2133. This time I went with a 2-stick kit to take advantage of the dual channel memory, but if you think that you'll upgrade to 16GB in the near future, then I would just get a single 8GB stick. This RAM kit doesn't have a good looking heatsink on it or anything, but in this build our goal is to get the absolute best price to performance ratio for these new parts. Next up we have our graphics card choice, and I went with the Radeon Gigabyte RX 460 2 Gigabyte Wind Force. I've demonstrated in a ton of my videos just how much value you get with an RX 460. I highly encourage you to check out some of my benchmarking videos with this card. At 74 bucks, you're really getting a deal here, but if you want to spend a few extra bucks and get a few more frames per second, then I recommend going with the cheapest Nvidia GTX 1050 that you can find. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video so you can see the benchmarks of this build. For storage, I I went with a single 1TB Western Digital Caviar Blue hard drive. This is pretty much a staple in PC builds these days, especially priced at $48 for 1TB. This will be big enough to store a huge Steam library, and at 7200 RPMs, your operating system won't be too slow, but you'll definitely have the option to add an SSD here in the future, which I recommend. Next up, we have the EVGA 80 Plus Certified 430 Watt Power Supply. 430 watts is plenty for this budget build and you'll actually be able to use this for future upgrades. A ton of people waste money these days on power supplies that they don't take advantage of, so I went with the cheapest option I have but with a reputable brand. If you want to spend a few more dollars, then I would recommend the 520 watt Seasonic, but like I said, we are trying to make this build as cheap as possible. And finally we have our case selection, which I'm actually pretty proud of this find. I chose the Bit Phoenix Nova ATX Mid Tower case, which costs only $27 on NC. CIX. At this price range, you can really find some bad cases that are a pain to work in, but this case actually has some pretty solid reviews and it looks really nice. Keep in mind the parts I chose for this build do not match in color scheme or anything, so you will be able to see through the side window, but I think it'll still look good. This case isn't anything special outside of the looks however, so just be aware that you're getting what you're paying for. So with the part selection out of the way and costing pretty much exactly 350 bucks, we have to run some benchmarks to see how it'll perform. Since you can tell that I'm not actually building this one on camera, we'll have to resort to a respectable YouTube channel for the benchmarks. 
The YouTube channel named Benchmark, go figure right, has a great video that I'll link down below that tests the G4560 and RX460, so I'll base my numbers off that. That exact video also compares it with the GTX 1050, so if you were interested in going that route like I explained earlier, I would check out the video. In Counter-Strike Global Offensive, he got an FPS average of 126 in 1080p and max settings, which is very impressive. For Dune 2016 in 1080p and very high settings, he got an average of 62 frames per second, impressive yet again, especially for a GPU intensive title. For Overwatch in 1080p and ultra settings, you'll get an FPS average of 72. And finally, for a CPU intensive title, which is where we can see the Pentium lacking a bit of horsepower, in Grand Theft Auto 5, you'll get an average of 36 FPS in 1080p and very high settings. Overall, these are some pretty impressive numbers for a build that only costs $350 and you're getting all new parts. If you're more interested in watching me actually build a PC on camera, then I encourage you to check out my $200 used plus new PC build that I did about a month ago. That one got some pretty crazy results. Well, that wraps up my $350 new PC gaming build. Make sure you guys let me know what you think of this build and also if you think it's worth it to buy new parts at this price range. Like I said, I'm pretty comfortable buying these new parts, but anything lower in quality, I would suggest going the used route. Out. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop a like down below to help support my channel. And as always, thank you for watching. And please subscribe for more Zach's Tech Turf videos.